All right, so goal for today is to get the oil line finished. I have this fitting now. This is the one I've been talking about in the last couple of videos. It's just the M16 by one and a half male, M16 one and a half female. So the sensor goes in the top and then I'm gonna drill a hole and we'll disregard this. And then I'm gonna put the eighth NPT to 4AN90 on it. And I'll show you how I do that. So basically what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna screw this thing in there into the port and then I'm gonna mark one of the flats or whatever point I feel like is gonna be a good direction facing rearward. So I don't just wanna randomly drill into it because where it stops when it's fully threaded might not work and you could have your hole in the wrong spot. So I'll show you that. All right, so what I did with this fitting was I just thread taped it and then screw it all the way in as tight as it would go and then I marked the flat on the backside. So it should work pretty good to go straight back with it. So I'll pull it out and then we'll drill the hole. All right, so there's what the fitting looks like when it's all done, just drilled and tapped. And I got the 4AN, eighth inch NPT to 4AN fitting in there. So I'll put it on. I am gonna have to take this out, I'm guessing, because the cam sensor and the bolt for the valley cover is gonna be in the way. So what I'll do is I'll thread this thing all the way in and then I'll put that on from the backside once it's all the way seated. Okay, so I did go ahead and vacuum all my seeds and helicopters out of there. And that's kind of what she looks like on the backside. So, so you get to keep oil pressure and then you got an oil feed line. You just use the 90 degree 4AN and then the feed comes out. Now I can put the intake back on. Murphy's? Yeah, that sounds good. A hog, they have a new pizza called like Hog Heaven or something. It's like bacon, sausage, and Canadian bacon. Yeah, we can do that. That sounded good. All right, so you got this piece done. Not too bad considering I haven't welded aluminum in like four months, five months. I don't know, it's been a while. So this piece is gonna go in the intake. So I'm gonna modify that a little bit. Basically, it's gonna go out right in here like this. I started thinking about how I wanted to do the intake air temp sensor and it was just solid coupler all the way around. So I actually trimmed a little bit off of this to bring it out a little bit. And now I have a section that I can put the uh, aluminum bung in. I might actually just try to thread it into the aluminum. I might weld the bung on, I don't know. Let's see what we do. All right, so here's the piece. Got the bung all welded in there. So now I'm gonna put it on. So it should be pretty decent. I kind of offset it a little bit at an angle away from the belt, just because straight down is a little close. So I'm gonna put this thing in and we'll see what it looks like. So that's what it looks like without the clamps. I did end up putting this side out. So originally when I built it, I, the sensor was straight down. But I think these welds look a little bit better on this side. So I flipped it around the other way and then it still comes over that way. It doesn't really hit anything. It's got plenty of room. So that should be good. I like that. I have a temp sensor now. That's not in the intake. Now I just got to wire it. I'm going to put the clamps on and then I'm going to take this thing. And it is the, the tan and black wires that are going to be pulled out. And I'll add a plug onto that and we'll plug it in. All right, so let's get cracking on this uh, intake air temp sensor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the math plug and I'm gonna take this tan and black wire. It's all the way on the left side of the plug. They're right next to each other, tan and black. So I'm gonna cut that off and then I'm actually gonna just cut the whole thing off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these three MAF wires at different lengths. Just because I feel like it. 
is I'm going to tape them back in the harness and they're all different lengths like this so when I tape them back in the harness they don't accidentally like touch and do anything weird even though I'm going to have it disabled I'm just going to feel a little bit better about it so I'll take this I'm just going to turn it around tape it back in the harness and it is the like I said the tan and black for the math or for the intake temp sensor and there's a way you can check that besides looking at a wiring diagram you basically just look inside the math sensor and you can see where the intake air temperature sensor is inside of it and then you can reference where the where it is on the plug so if you've never seen the inside of this that's your intake air temp sensor and if you look at where that is in relation to the plug you can see the little oval around those two pins right there so that's your thermistor it's like a uh, like a resistance based temperature sensor so that's what's inside that thing so we're gonna relume this and then it'll almost look like we tried it what I'm gonna do now is tape a plug onto that. So I thought I had one in there. So this is an actual temp sensor also, so I'm just gonna steal the plug off of it. Just had one sitting in the in the drawers over there. So it basically doesn't matter which way you which way you hook it up, like there isn't polarity or anything on these things because it's just a resistance based unit. So as long as it is hooked up, one side basically one side basically gives you the signal out of the computer and then the resistance changes and then the other wire goes back as like an input and based on the resistance changing that's what gives you your temperature reading. Like I said, I'm just going to tape these. I don't mind using tape. I've never really had bad luck using tape. Sometimes I crimp and heat shrink, but depending on depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I just don't really feel like it. All right, so now that that's all taped up, I'm just going to put it back in the harness, and then we'll do it like we'll do it real fancy. We'll just do it just like the factory does it. We'll tape around the wire. And then we'll go through the split loom. And then we'll tape around the loom. All right. So now this thing is pretty much ready to go and be ran over to my sensor. It should have enough length because it's pretty darn close to where the math was. All right, so let's see what we want to do here. Figure out how much length we actually do have. There we go. It's all plugged in. And it should actually be pretty good, just like that. I don't really even think I'm gonna change it. I'll probably just leave it just like that. So there we go, now we got an intake temp sensor. All right, so we are basically almost close to maybe kind of being done. So I got all the spark plugs changed. I just did the driver's side. I have the cover back on it, which is kind of irrelevant. I do have to do the map sensor yet, so the plug's right there. I just got to wire that in. I do have all the vacuum lines and everything all done. So aside from map sensor, I got to put the liner in and the wheel on, and that should be it. I was going to start it for you guys so we could actually run it with the downpipe, but as you can see, I got it on the charger because one of my kids must have went in there and turned the dome lights on.
So I just went to go try to start it and it just clicked and the battery's down to 9.7 volts. So we're gonna let it sit overnight and charge.